Welcome back to the Sitting Guilds International Spoken ESOL workshop with the focus on range. This is the, the feedback, the conclusion. I hope that you enjoyed the workshop and found it useful. Don't forget that we're calling it teacher development, not teacher training. We can all develop as teachers and I hope that you, as I, constantly learn new things about range, constantly learn new things about the tests and about teaching. I think some of the key points to, to remember following the workshop is that there is a very, very close relationship between the Common European Framework of Reference and the Sitting Guilds tests. This is vital in today's world where people need certification that actually means something. Um, we looked at all six levels. There are six levels in the Common European Framework, A1 to C2, therefore there are six levels from A1 preliminary right up to C2 mastery in the Sitting Guilds tests. You looked at what range actually means. Many, many learners and many teachers think that range is just a range of vocabulary, just having a number of words. It's much more active than that. It's not just a question of how many words you know, it's a question of what you can do with the language you've got. And it's not just a range of vocabulary and collocation, it is a range of structures and, perhaps most important in the context of a spoken test, of language function. Um, we've also looked at the part that range plays in assessment. It's actually very simple. Range is one of the criteria. Communication is the overall criterion, and then accuracy, pronunciation, fluency and range each contribute an equal part. So a candidate needs to perform as well in each of the criteria as in all the others. Um, the four parts of the test. We looked at the four parts of the test and in part one where the candidate gives personal information the range may well be quite limited. In part two when it's the role play functional language is going to be the focus, there will be an increasing range. In part three, there will be a range of different turn-taking devices, so candidate and interlocutor will use language to concede, to take a turn, and to move the whole discussion on. Obviously, when we look at part four, the long term, range really comes into play there. The candidate has to manage the discourse and needs a range of language in order to do this. Once again, each of the four parts of the test contributes to the overall pass, fail or first class pass award. Um, we've looked at range in what the Common European Framework describes as the four domains. And if you look at the four domains, you'll see, I hope, that what City and Guilds does is to set language teaching and testing in the public, in the personal, in the educational and occupational domains. That's what people need language for. It's not just language in the classroom, it's language in the real world. And I hope what you found most useful were some of the ideas that we shared for classroom teaching. One or two of these ideas are mine, but others I am grateful to colleagues at Academic Development who've um, contributed ideas that actually work. So this is practical advice from practising teachers, teachers who have helped learners to learn and to succeed in examinations. Um, developing range isn't easy. From a learner's point of view, continually adding vocabulary, adding structure, adding function can be frustrating. One of the things that I like from my colleagues' ideas is the element of game. Make learning fun and develop range by having a good time, develop range by focusing not so much on accuracy, not so much on getting it right, but on using what you've got. Well, I hope that you found the workshop useful. Um, my conclusion now is to say don't forget that you can, if you want to, use the City and Guilds teaching support materials. You can use the City and Guilds website, as you saw in the workshop. Um, there are the sample papers, sample tests that you can download. There is any amount of support. So I hope with this support you'll be able to enjoy teaching and teach towards success. Oh, yes, don't forget this is just one of a series of workshops 
in International Spoken ESOL and International ESOL. If you found this one useful, as I hope you did, please join us on the others. I think that's all from me for now. Good luck in the teaching, enjoy it and be successful. Bye for now.